And now it's Deborah Cobelt Live. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here today on our show. And look who I've got joining us, Janisha Adams Ginyard. And gee, what's that movie behind you that she's in? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. But let me tell you, this girl has done so much in her young life, if you will. Um, gosh, I mean, this is just the latest, right? You were just at Comic-Con. You've been everywhere. You are a stunt person. You're an Emmy-nominated actor. You've been a sports reporter. You've been all sorts of things. Gosh, I believe the U.S. team for bobsledding. I mean, you've been an athlete at UC Berkeley. I mean, my list, I could just cover my entire show just naming it off. So welcome to our show. I'm thrilled to have you. Thanks, Deb. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I just have to say, go Bears. Woohoo! I bleed blue and gold. You see Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, you're a pretty amazing person because the more I read up on you, and of course, I've met you in person, right? We met at a museum opening or a museum um, uh, gathering, and you're just a pretty incredible. First, let's start with, let's start, how about, with the movie that's right behind you. How about it? Tell me about your character. You were also in the first Black Panther Uh Tell me how that all happened. Yes, so I'm in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and let me tell you, it has been one heck of a ride. I am one of the original door Milages, which are the all-female Wakandan warriors that protect Wakanda and the king, yes. And so I was in the first one, and I was identified by my facial tattoo. I have a tattoo over the right side of my face, um, covering my eye and down my cheek. And so um, fast forward, uh, my character got a name in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which was the second release Disney Plus series. And so right. that was very exciting because Gnome Blade, which is my character's name, which means beauty, it has now um, gone over into the Wakanda Forever, uh, sequel to Black Panther. The role is much bigger um there's more action for known blaze so it's pretty pretty exciting yeah i mean i would say so <laughs> in fact i just saw a video clip of you know um i guess it was tmz right they found you over at at lax right let me tell you girl you know you've arrived when tmz is <laughs> is hunting you down at lax am i right about that <laughs> i know yeah it's crazy like because you i mean you're just in your zone and the next thing you know they're like hey what's going on you know the camera's right there um, but yeah, they did. And, uh, it's funny cause they found me on the first one as well. But speaking of known, like, I have to admit, cause you did point out the poster behind me. I'm on yeah. the movie poster and I'm on the movie poster twice. Right. Yes. Tell our people, tell our audience why that would be. Yes. Why? So as one of the warriors, so, um, this line here under the title is where they have the warriors. And if yeah. you count from the center, third from the left, that's me holding my spear in my left hand. And if you count third to the right, or the right, then the spear is in the opposite hand. So we're in two different positions, spears in each, in each hand. So pretty exciting. <laughs> Girl, you have arrived. Tell me what it's <laughs> like. Tell me what it's like on the set. Let's start with the first one, right? Yeah. Um, because I know that, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Chadwick is no longer with us, but I know that you would say, gosh, nobody even knew that he wasn't well, uh, that he was so generous in spirit. And I know that this second film is a bit of a homage to him without a doubt. Right. Talk to us about that from a personal level. Yeah. So Chad was awesome. I mean, the energy yeah. that he gave, um, day in and day out. I will tell you this, working on the first one, those hours were very long. I mean, and yeah. we were in Atlanta, so the conditions just were just extreme, both ends of the spectrum, extreme hot to extreme cold. You're talking 14, 15 hours a day. And he didn't complain, you know, so you find out he's sick and, you know, he, he dies from this illness and you're just like, wait, you had this condition while we were working in Atlanta in this extreme hot, in the extreme cold? hours yeah. on end, over delivering for T'Challa. It was just like mind boggling. Uh, but yeah. he was such a like family person. Like he wanted to make sure everyone knew each other. He would throw parties so that everyone could get along. And you know, when I would talk to him, he would he would still sometimes be in character with the accent. So he'll talk with the accent or he might just <laughs> bust out. 
you know, because he played Jackie Robinson, he played James Brown, so he'll do like this James Brown shuffle. I mean, Chad was just, he was hilarious. He, I don't think people realize how, how funny he was. He was actually pretty hysterical. Like, he was very funny. So um, I, I missed that when I was working on the yeah. second one. We trained yeah. a lot for the first one, right? Because this was a new thing for a lot of us. Um, I had never trained in bow staff, but that was what we trained in for our weapons because we fight with spears on camera. So that was the best way to transition into that role. And Chad made sure we had a drummer during our training and our rehearsal and our choreography so that we can kind of get in that spirit. So we had the African drums playing. And it was awesome. He made sure that, that we had that during uh, training. So, yeah, he was so committed. He was, like, fully committed to giving the Wakanda vibe and that that Wakanda spirit, you know, on set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is sort of a wide question, but how do you think this really changed things for African-American actors? Because, let's say, especially when seeing the first one, right? I mean, it's primarily an African-American cast, right? And I, I remember the first time seeing it thinking, this is great. This yeah. is absolutely fantastic yeah. because even if you're watching, okay, the story of Jackie Robinson, there's always someone else thrown in there who is not African American, right? Yeah. The general manager, whatever. But this really was primarily, and I thought, this has got to change things. Like, what do you think about that and how has it changed? Yeah, it has changed. Um, I think it changed a lot. And yeah. it wasn't the fact that we didn't see African Americans in like lead roles before. Right. Black Panther, it was the fact that it was an action film and it was done yeah. by Marvel, you know, and, and it was a predominantly all black cast. And that's where you had the media and different people with these big question marks. Oh my God, can this be done? Will this be successful? And it's like, uh, excuse me, African-Americans are like major consumers. Of course, we're going to go out. Of course, we're going to watch this movie. Like we watched movies before this. So yeah, of course, we're going to go out now because the representation is there. And so it, I think it changed a lot and it, it showed people like this could have always been done, right? There didn't need to be any fear or hesitation or resistance behind it. And, and not only was it done for Marvel, but it was done by a black director, Ryan Coogler, you know, he, That's right. he, and he knocked it out of the park with the writing. So, you know, it changed, it changed the game, I would say for the action genre because there are there, the, the fandom and the geek culture and the nerd culture and the cosplay culture. There has always been a, I, um, there's always been a group there that has been underserved. So now you see that their content is being made and it is showing them on screen. So I can see someone on screen in a scientist role and a strong female authoritative soldier role that looks like me. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's a game for a lot, especially youth, you know? Yeah, I mean, look, it's taken about 100 years. I mean, remember back in the day, like way back in the day, you know, often that white actors would be in makeup to play yeah. an African-American. I mean, yeah. when I first studied film and I realized that that was the case, I thought, are you kidding me? So right. note to self, note to self, whenever an executive or the media is questioning this stuff, it means you're on to something, right? It's going to work. Yeah. That's what I... That's what I yeah. say. Yeah, right? because I mean, this and the movie came out in, you know, let's say the first Panther, right? Came out in, in February of 2018. And then fast forward, there were so many little Black Panthers and Dora Milaje's and Shuri's during Halloween. I remember kids coming to my door like, trick or treat. I'm like, wow. Like, it was just unheard of. You had so many kids who were in those characters, in Chad's part. You know, I saw Dora Milaje, a little girl in my character from the tattoo on the, on her face. So- Okay, I'm loving, I'm loving that. When you <laughs> answered the door, they were probably like, uh, you know you look like, right? <laughs> I do love that. That's gotta be a real kick, right? It was, yeah. You know, and I'm handing her little Kit Kat to Reese's and I'm just like, this is so adorable. So yeah, wow. I think it changed and it just, it just opened the door just, I mean, it, it nailed the, uh, it was a, a moment showing like representation does matter. And it helps when people see people on camera who looks like them. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> let's, di let's dial it back, like way back. You grew up here in SoCal. Yes. You are a, you are a faith-based person. Now I say that yes. because it comes through. You are strong. 
Like no matter what is thrown in your way, I, I mean, as you've said yourself, you'll figure out a way around it and make it something that's going to work for you, right? Like you've said, if somebody says no, it's like, okay, thanks. Yes. Where's the next? Where's the yes? Could you talk yeah. to us a little bit about growing up? How did you develop that attitude? Because I, I want people to hear that because it's not easy for anybody, right? But you managed to turn something into a positive. Talk to us about it. Yeah. So again, yes, I am straight from South California, like Southern Cali. That's my home. I'm not a transplant. I love it. And my mom, you know, I give all this credit to my mom because that's how we were raised, you know, do good in school, faith in God, put your faith in Christ, you know, you know, man is your faith belongs in God. You pray, you, 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 you know, we, my mom was very big in the vision boards you know, about manifestation, putting things out into the universe and then walking as if they've already happened, right? And so um, I'm so incredibly grateful and thankful for my mom and how I was raised because um, I don't operate in fear. I really operate in abundance and faith and knowing that things are going to happen because I'm doing the work. I'm adamant, determined and disciplined in what it is. You know, I know that there's enough work for everybody. I don't need to cheat, steal, kill, or, you know, connive anybody for anything. And so, um, yeah, and I, and I think that's a, a foundation of my, that is, that is the foundation of my success. That is the mm. foundation of how I navigate this planet. Um, knowing that, you know, my faith and trust in God is enough, you know? I don't have to lie. I don't have to cheat. I don't have to steal to get where I need to be. Or get to, or where I want to go, and it, it's going to happen, and I know it's going to happen because I'm putting in the work, and it's mindset. My mom taught me mindset, and I think so many people don't have strong minds. Mind, your mind is the most powerful organ that you can have, you know, outside of your heartbeat. Um, mm. But mm. so many people navigate this world with a weak mind. They say, "I can't. I don't. That I." I can't is not even in my vocabulary. And I really don't even say I try. I'm saying I do, I will, it's done. Do you know what I mean? So it's very much a mindset. And again, I couldn't have asked for a better mom or, or, or a better, better way to grow up because that is exactly why I am where I am today uh, because of mm. the mindset, you know, my, my, my mindset and my faith and trust in God. Yeah. You also talk about putting in the work. Uh, what yeah. do you say to people out there? Um, because you become an inspiration. You have, right? What do you say to people out there who say, hey, man, I'm putting in the work and it's not happening. What do you say to them? Because I'm sure you've been in that position how many times, right? So how do you get through that? You keep doing the work. It's, it's not a part. It's not, it's not where you put in the work and you stop, you know? And it's about continuing because we don't know when, when you're going to hit but the thing, right. like, I, I don't know when, when I was going to hit or, or, or when I'm going to get that big break. But what I did know, it was going to happen. And it was only going to happen if I continued. It wouldn't happen if I stopped, right? So, so many people want to know, well, I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm like, well, great. Keep doing it. It's going to happen, right? You believe that? I believe everything that I say. I believe mm -hmm. the work that I'm doing. So, I'm not going to stop until it happens because I know it's going to happen, right? But but you also put yourself in play because I know that you've spoken to people, right, who are background players, who've continued to be background players. You've been in that role yourself yeah. and you looked around and said, mm, I don't think so. I got I'm, this is where my goal is to get here. And, yeah. And, and you did it. And it's, again, people, that's why I want to get through. But it's everyone. my goal. It, it's here. It's my, right. my goal. Right. So right. I know what it is I want. And so I'm going to get what I want. I'm not walking around lax base goal. I'm not just like, oh, I'm just going to float through today. It's like, no, I know what it is. I, I have yeah. a vision board. I see everything on there that I want to accomplish and I want to happen. And I'm going mm -hmm. for it. I do the research. My mom, my mom always said, be a student of the sport. The minute I made that transition from acting into stunts, I did research. What do I need to do to be an awesome stunt performer? Well, I'm gonna need some air awareness, so I better pick up some basic tumbling. I'm gonna need to know how to land properly, better do some gymnastics, better get trampoline. So I'm doing research because she said it's all, it's so, 
this, oh my God, this is powerful. <laughs> she said, it's better to be ready and not needed than to be needed and not ready, right? So I'm putting in the work, I am prepared because proper preparation prevents poor production. That's what she told us. And so I think the only difference between me and a lot of people out there is that I'm constantly grinding, I'm putting in the work and I'm not giving up, period. That's the only difference between me and someone else. That's it. You, someone, you decided to give up and I did it. It's not luck. I hate when people say, oh, you're lucky. No, I'm not lucky. We all have 24 hours. We have the, I have the same 24 hours you have. I just made a decision. I made a choice of what I wanted to do. I made sure that I'm operating in my purpose and my passion. That's another thing people have to figure out. What is your purpose? What is your passion? What is it that you want to do? You know, mm -hmm. it's just decision making. It's really decision making. I'm not anything special. I've just decided to do what I want to do. And I've gone after it without giving up and being adamant. And it is not luck. It is hard work. Yeah. What does your vision board look right now? And do you literally have a board up in your room or kitchen or someplace and you just pin stuff to it or write to it? What, what does it look like? So I have my vision board and I'll, I'll just show you a picture. I'm looking at two of my vision boards right now. Oh. I keep it by, I keep them by entryways. So the two I have right now are on my front door right here. At, I close it and I see it on the back. It's two of them right there. Yeah. And things okay. are getting out of the way. Marvel was on my vision board. Yeah, I even and I uh, and I even had JJ Abrams on my vision board and then fast forward I ended up working on um Lovecraft Country which JJ Abrams was one of the production companies Bad Robot. So, they work, you know. Vision boards wow. work. Manifest things, I put it out into the universe and I walk as if they they've happened, you know. Girl, you are something else. I have to tell you. And you know, sometimes what gives me incentive is I will say to myself, "Well, Deborah, if you don't keep going and you don't keep trying, what's your alternative? I'm actually going to be sitting there wishing you did. To me, that's almost more, here we go with that word, terrifying. The thought yeah. of just being somewhere and wishing you did something to me is way scarier than going and trying something and, if you will, failing or not happening and you have to try again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. That's something that keeps me going a lot of times. Like, just keep trying. Like, otherwise you're keep sitting trying. there. Yeah, keep trying. I mean- just keep doing, keep doing, because at the end of the day, it's like, that is the alternative, right? The alternative is you do to win, you do to succeed, you do to progress and eliminate the fear, you know, yeah. don't operate out of the fear and definitely don't, don't, don't not do not, not do it because of what people will think they don't matter, you know, no. And they're not thinking about you anyway, as they're going to sleep at all. Like not even this much people. All right. Let's talk a little bit about you as an athlete. Um, I love it. You've been an athlete your whole life, right? I guess yes. I'm going to say it comes naturally, but there's that part again, where you work at it and you work hard at it. Um, and that really promotes a mindset. Um, yeah. I think a very positive mindset to continue. Let's talk about it. Cause you have done a lot right in college, in high school and college and beyond. Um, particularly the bobsledding, which sort of blew my mind. That's where I was like, okay, what hasn't this woman done? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm like, really? That too? So anyway, let's go for it. Let's let's go for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, I have been an athlete my entire life from, you know, club track and field when I was a youth. And I did track and field. I did the hurdles and the heptathlon. I was a multi eventer So I basically was like a little Jackie Joyner Kersey so to speak, you know, hurdles and heptathlon and continued that in high school. I was CIF champion in the hurdles. I went to Gar High School right here in Cerritos. I was also a California state finalist in the hurdles and went on to college at UC Berkeley, Pac-10, did track and field there. So again, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I've been an athlete and I like to say a multi-hyphenate. I've been a multi-hyphenate my entire life, student athlete, you know, actress, stunt woman, multi-hyphenate, you know, you just can't group me in one box. I'm very well-rounded. Whoa, and whoa, whoa. Even your name, right? Even your yes, name. Yes, even my name, like, Adam Gingard. Like, <laughs> right? It's like you're living it in every possible way. So and we keep going. Totally, Deb. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. I, I've been, I was born a multi-hyphenate, literally by yeah. facts. <laughs> and so after college, you know, I said, I'm going to, do sports modeling and oh actually 
Um, I did bobsledding. I was on the national bobsled team as a brakeman. Yeah. <laughs> how, do, how does that happen? Like, you know, you're doing track and you're in and UC Berkeley, you know, you're, you're killing it there. And then all of a sudden, what? You go, you go on a bobsled? I mean, how does that happen, really? I, okay, I need to so know. honestly, I always loved winter sports. I've always wanted to do, honest, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a speed skater. I wanted to be a speed skater. I love the Apollo Anton Ono. He was like my favorite athlete. Like, oh, oh love, yes. love him. Yeah. Yes. So I grew up, I was growing up watching him and I'm like, oh my God, I want to do speed skating. Like I loved, I just loved the ice sports and the winter sports. And then I got to college and I was talking to my strength and conditioning coach, who's now my best friend. And I was like, man, somebody like, I want to do bobsledding. And she looked up and saw that they were having the U.S. practice um trial things or whatever I forget what they call like open thing and I was a freshman at the time so there was no way I could go so she went right. next thing you know she passed the test and did all that and she was no longer my strength and conditioning coach she was all wow. in the U.S. yeah she was at their practice facilities wow. in like Park City and Lake Placid like she went and did international wow. with them for years so she went and I'm like I gave her this idea like whatever then fast forward a <laughs> couple years later they call her back, hey, Summer, you know, um, I, I I need a brakeman. And she's like, well, I, I have a kid. I can't do all that, but I know the perfect person. And sure enough. Wow. Yeah, me up, she so, was like, yeah, I know the perfect person. She's the one who told me about bobsledding, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so, and this is the thing people don't realize. Bobsledders come from different athletic disciplines. A lot of them come from track. Um, they're multi eventers or they've done like strength and conditioning or, or I'm, I'm sorry they've done like Olympic weightlifting like cleans and jerks because that sled is about 500 you know pounds and so right. you need to be able to push that sled on ice so yeah bobsledders come from a lot of uh, different athletic disciplines race car drivers I have friends who who drove who uh, you, who raced like you know NASCAR and stuff and they would be like bobsled drivers but as a brakeman, you come from like a track background, a multi vendor background. Yeah. Well, it's, it's always been a little scary for me to watch it because I'm like, <laughs> oh man, do not wipe out, right? Like, how, yeah, fast people, <laughs> how fast are your people going? I mean, you need that brake person to know what they're doing, right? It's like, yes. otherwise, right? Yes. How so fast as did you, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's hilarious, right? Okay, so luckily, I've never been in a crash. My driver uh, never was in a crash when I was a brakeman. And I will say this. So as the brakeman, you do not stop the sled while it is going during the race. No. That is a no. The only time you help is at the beginning with the start and then, you know, the push or, and the finish. And literally oh. how I would know to stop. Yeah. The only way I knew to stop was my driver would turn around and tap me on my helmet and be like, Right, right, and then you know you're over the brakes and you're lifting up and you're pumping the, yeah, because you're kind of sitting oh over the brake. God, yeah. So that's how I knew right. the brake. Yeah, I don't see any of the race. My head's down the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That that's pretty. How fast do you guys end up going? Like at your fastest? Like eighty-five miles an hour, easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd, I'd be. I would be pulling on the brake, and in which case they'd be like, really. Thanks a lot. You just screwed up the race. It's like, you know, yeah, but, but no. I guess, wow, that's pretty something. Okay. But not only a bobsledder people, you've been a wrestler, right? You've been yes. a sports, you've been a sports reporter, which is yes. actually what you wanted to do, right? Early on in life, you wanted to do what? So let's talk about, I mean, you're just this all in company hyphen person, but it's not just like one hyphen. It's a little of everything. It's a multi hyphenate. You know? Yes. And it's like everything, a long. Yes. And everything has, helped with everything I've done. Everything that I've right. done has contributed to where I am now. Um, from, like you said, I did radio and reporting. I, while I was in the Bay Area, I worked at Clear Channel San Francisco, which is now iHeartRadio, but I was an on air radio personality. And wow. I did field reporting. I would go out during some of the Warrior games, the 49er games, and interview them when they would have, you know, a game or or their Sunday fellowship night, things like that. Yeah, I did that. I also had a little show that I did myself called Lights, Camera, Action with Hollywood. And I would interview comedians, uh, nationally headlining comedians and athletes. And they would come on my show. I had a radio show called Lady J's Wild World of Sports. 
and I interviewed not just the face of af the athletics, you know, because everyone wants to be the star. Everyone wants to be LeBron. Everyone wants to be Kobe. But I also interviewed people behind the scenes, like yeah. the sports psychologist. Um, I interviewed Kenny Bayless a couple of times, who is a well-known boxing referee. So I was trying to let people be introduced to other areas of athletics and introduce people to other fields that they might be interested in because everyone can't be LeBron. Everyone is not going to be Kobe, but you can be his psychologist. You can be the referee. You could be his uh, tape, his cut man. So, yeah. And you learn so much from them, right? Like yes. I uh, interviewed Gary V, not Gary V. Um, oh gosh. I interviewed the uh, head athletic trainer um, to the Lakers, not Gary yeah. V. What, what am I saying? Um, and he was incredible because all of the background stories he has on all of these guys. And yes. he worked with the Lakers for he worked with the Lakers for thirty years. And the stories you can get from these people is really incredible that you might totally. not get from the athletes get from the athletes themselves. So totally. um, it, it's really really amazing. So here you were doing all this. But you had your vision board. You were clear on what it was that you wanted to do. Marvel was always sort of at the top, right? Yeah. So how did you end up getting into acting and stunt work? And okay. you mentioned you mentioned very briefly about you know um, uh, the training that you had to do for stunt work because you immediately yeah. said, okay, I got to get trained. But what was your first time, like absolute first time acting in anything? Yes, so. Originally, growing up, since I was the age eight years old, I wanted to be a sports commentator and sign language interpreter for athletes because I'm fluent in sign language. That was what I wanted to do. And I did that, you know? Um, I did, like I said, you know, the reporting and the interviewing and stuff. So that's what I wanted to do since I was eight years old. But fast forward, I'm in college. You know, I'm doing the radio. I'm, I'm an athlete. I've been an athlete my whole entire life. So from after bobsledding ended, I started doing sports modeling. I started mm. doing so many Nike campaigns and, and Dick's Sporting Goods commercials. And I'm like, okay, wow. this is awesome. Yeah, I mean, it just, everything has all aligned with everything that I wanted to do. I wouldn't have gotten there if I didn't say I wanted to be a sports commentator, if I wasn't doing the sports, if I wasn't at Berkeley, if I didn't grow up as an athlete, like all these things have aligned in each step on the ladder is just making my story, you know, better and bigger. So I do the sports modeling and all of that. And then I'm like, well, you know, I kind of am getting tired of just standing here holding this kettlebell. You know, I want to more, I want more physicality. I want to be more active. I want to be jumping over things. So that's how the transition in the stunts happened. But while I was doing the athletic modeling, I was getting booked as an actress as the jock. Made sense, right? I was an athlete my whole entire life. I did collegiate track. So I'm getting booked as the basketball player on a movie, the basketball player on the show, the track girl doing hurdles. Yeah, it's just all been alignment. It's just being, I have put myself in the position to where things are coming to me as I'm making my way to where I, I'm going. And then I said, okay, we're gonna make a transition to stunts because I kind of want more act, you know, more physicality while I'm acting. And so I pick up basic tumbling. I did the research. I'm like, I need to figure out what stunt people do. You know, I'm naturally athletic, but I don't know gymnastics outside of a cartwheel. <laughs> I don't know how to do a back handspring. <laughs> so I hire no. a, a coach for that. Yeah. And and I, I probably mean, huh? No, go ahead. I mean, you're sort of like, um, you really are sort of amazing. I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it's also, you must have been born this way. Your, must, your mom must have looked at you as a little infant and said, <laughs> wow. I mean, she's got this thing down. She's not even crying. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's, I don't know. It's, it's just sort of radiates from you, right? Um, yeah, it's just, it's, um, it's just not allowing anything to just stop me. Right? I think, I mean, we, I don't want to say we all have it, but it's, it just comes down to decision making. What it is that I want to do and then do it. You know? Yeah, that's I it. I said I want to do this. Even, I want to do it. Even if you fail at it, which is totally cool. Because then yeah, you, know, you just keep going. Yeah, and it's not even about failing. Can, no, yeah, no, no. Even, that's not even like, it doesn't even cross my mind about failure. I, I, no, I really don't think about that. 
Yeah, it's always right, that's, that's actually, right. That's not even the right word. But what I'm saying yeah. is, people look, people use that word and say, "But what if?" So I just want to keep, you know, reminding people that yeah. you just keep going. You also produce faith, faith-based content, don't you? Yes. So my business name is Hyphy for Christ. Hyphy mm. is the combination is a is a word. It combines hyper and happy. It means to be overly excited or energetic. And it's a it's a term that originated in the Bay Area, and I got it from Bay Area. And so Hyphy for Christ means to be overly excited or energetic for Christ. And that's my business name. And we do faith based content. We inspire, encourage, and motivate through faith based content. And mm. pre pandemic, uh, we had three plays that we did. We were on our way on tour, starting in Oakland. Um, and then COVID happened, but, um, we're going to start back comedy shows, just, yeah, everything faith-based. Yeah. Wow. And I mm -hmm. guess that was up on, up on your vision board. Like you said, your vision board right now is in places where you can see it. Can you read to me what's on there? Or is it like some top secret thing? Well, no, like no, no, no. I can read to you. And, I, and it's also, sometimes there are pictures as well. Like I can see right now, one of them says, hold on, let me scoot this light out the way really quick. Like, like, are you sitting, do you want to be president of the United States? Is that it? You're just sitting yeah, in that no. chair? I mean, because knowing you, it'll happen. I'm just asking because, like, <laughs> you know, let, let's, let's just follow you all the way because I have a feeling. Uh, tell me. Yeah, so I don't have president up there, but I do see myself as being mayor, um, mayor of my city. So, yeah, and I say that all the time. Yeah, so I know I'll be mayor soon. <laughs> We could use some really solid politicians. I'm telling you. So yeah, solid, um, I don't, honest politicians. Solid, solid, honest politicians. Forward-thinking, honest, good people to, yeah. to to run our cities. God knows. So please, I will support you. Not sure if we're living in the same place at that time, but I'm all there. <laughs> what else? What else is on that thing? Yes. Yeah, so there is Morgan Freeman on there because I have. All right, Morgan. Uh, yeah, Morgan Freeman's there. There is a beach chair. There's a ring on there. There's Colgate, because I still believe that I will be getting a Colgate national commercial. So Colgate okay. is on there. Yeah. And um, there's Emmy on there, because I was Emmy nominated, which is so funny, because Emmy was on there well before my nomination. So, you know, the next step is to be Emmy winner, and I know that's going to happen. Yeah, so... <laughs> I, I'm yeah. sorry, but I'm, I'm kind of laughing at the Colgate thing. There's just something funny about it. It's like, you know what? I want to do a Colgate commercial. It's not like, you know, I, I just kind of love that. I mean, there's something yeah. kind of precious about that one, right? You want to do Colgate. Yeah. Mor Morgan Freeman, somehow, somehow I believe that is in your future. And, oh, um, absolutely. And Anything else? Because guess what? We're going to reach out to these people. We're going to say, Morgan, guess what? And and the Colgate people, I can't say I have connections there, but we got to get this out to them. What else is on that board? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, we're, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> this is funny. I don't know because I each one, right? Because you seem to be, a, you know, going through each one. Yeah. So, because I'm going from a distance. That's why I'm going to take a picture so you can see. Because these All right. these, there's two that are here. So I see M. Night, uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, he's like one of my favorite writer directors, and I've auditioned yeah. for one of his projects. Haven't booked anything yet, but I know I'm gonna be working on one of his films. And so, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, all no, right. I got that. You, that you asked me, and then there's the word on here that I can see. It says no limits. Yeah. You know, and I want I want my people to know you are such a humble person too, because when I met you, right. We were at this the Pinocchio exhibit yes. over at the Italian American Museum over in Los Angeles. And yes. you were in the corner. And my friend, which I think is also your friend, Demetria, came up to me and yes. said, Oh, would you want to meet her? I said, Oh, I'd love to. Yes. And then you and I just struck up a conversation and you were quietly sort of observing the room, you know, yes. not not in any way owning it, which you could, particularly coming off of what you've just come off of, right? Come on. Um, Black Panther, Wakanda oh, forever, but you yeah, mm -hmm. I love art and history. So I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And I'm like, I lived in the Bay Area. Oh my God, Ghirardelli. Like I was learning. I was I was very much impressed with, with what was going on there. <laughs> you were. And that's just that's just who you are. That's how you take things in, right? You watch, you observe, you learn, and yes. then you ex and you execute. And there's a lot we could all learn from that. I'm telling you, you've made such an impression <laughs> on me. And we're never uh -huh. too old. Like none of us are ever too old or we don't like know it all guys. Like there's a lot we could learn from each other. And Very that's true. sort of the, that's sort of what you've done for me. 
So uh, I just want you to know that. So um, I really appreciate you coming you. on and just sort of being with our audience for a time. What is up next for you? Is there a film in the works? What's going on? I mean, yes. why do I feel like you're going to end up going to the moon? Or just something like that. But what's next? <laughs> Oh my God, okay, I just love you, Deb. Yes, like, I told you when we first met, I was like, oh my God, you were just awesome. Like, I loved, I loved your energy. Your energy was great. So I'm so happy. Thank you for having me on your show. And what's next for me is I have a Christmas movie that's coming out that um, I'm the lead actress. This is my first movie where I'm the lead actress and I'm opposite oh. Dean Kane. Yes. Oh, I love him. Oh dear God, I just, he's amazing. What's the name of the movie? So the movie is called Letters at Christmas, and that okay. comes out um, during this holiday season. I don't know the exact date yet, but this holiday season. And then next year, I start shooting a horror film where I'm also the lead actress. We start shooting in June. Yeah. Ooh. And I'm working on a short film where I'm one of the producers as well, and it's called The Jamaican Queen and Her Jerk King. Yeah, so... I love yeah. it. I love it so much. Gosh, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's just wonderful. And I don't know, tapping into my audience and you're welcome Aww. back anytime. And I look forward to seeing you again, not on this whole Zoom thing. So really, yeah. I do. <laughs> no, so, thank you, um, Deb. This has been awesome. Like, I love your interview. This has been great. Yeah. I hope, no, I I just, hope your audience got something from this and just understands this. Just do. Don't just do. Don't allow anyone to deter you from your dreams, your aspirations, and your goals. I mean, there is, I, I used to say, um, you know, oh, I, no, this is what I say. I don't know why I said used to say. I say, the sky is not the limit because the sky is way too low. You know? Mm. Yeah. That's another so, good one. You gave us a yeah. few good nuggets earlier on in the interview. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them and use them. Uh, <laughs> they're wonderful. Uh, they're Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, you know, joining us for our show. You'll find our interview on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. And then the audio version, it's on iHeartRadio. There you go. Uh, Apple, just, I don't know, all over the place. Spotify, Amazon, so wherever you get your video or audio podcasts, you'll, look, you'll find us. Just look us up. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please go see Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, I love this film, and I love the first one. They're, they're sort of up there as my favorites. So um, thank you again, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.